A key component of the modern world economy, the chemical industry delivers products and innovations to enhance everyday life. It is also an industry in transformation, where chemical executives and workers are delivering growth and industry-changing advancements while responding to pressures from investors, regulators, and public opinion. Discover how leading companies are approaching these challenges here on The Chemical Show. Join Victoria Meyer, president of Progressio Global and host of The Chemical Show, as she speaks with executives across the industry and learns how they are leading their companies to grow, transform, and push industry boundaries on all frontiers. Here's your host, Victoria Meyer. Hi, I'm Victoria Meyer, president of Progressio Global and host of The Chemical Show. This week, I am speaking with Sarah Waller, who is the Vice President and General Manager of Nylon Solutions at Advancix. Sarah has a long history in the chemical industry. Prior to joining Advancix, she spent a number of years at WR Grace in a variety of commercial and strategy roles. And that's actually where I first met Sarah when we were working together on a growth project in their licensing and technology business. So Sarah has agreed to come on and share a bit of her story and tell us a bit more about Advancix and how they're approaching today's markets. So Sarah, welcome to The Chemical Show. Thanks, Victoria. Really uh, delighted to be here. Me too. I'm glad to have you here. So what is your origin story? How'd you get into chemicals and what brought you to your current role at Advancix? It's sort of funny. I sort of made my way into the chemical industry kind of accidentally. I grew up in Virginia in a really small town in the Appalachian Mountains. My dad worked in the manufacturing industry and my mom was a nurse. And so I grew up with a lot of manufacturing in the area and really had an affinity for math and science. And I decided I wanted to go to Virginia Tech and study mechanical engineering. I was actually the first person in my family to go away to college. And I thought engineering would be a really cool thing to do. And I chose mechanical engineering. It was just sort of the affinity that I had at the time. And I caught the manufacturing bug pretty early on. I had some co-op and internship experiences back toward my hometown. And I learned about lean manufacturing. And I thought that was really cool and really fun. And after I graduated, I made my way into the chemical industry. I moved out to Colorado and uh, found my first real job at a really small, really small, like think 30 people, chemical company that manufactured catalysts. And it was outside of Denver, out in the plains. I managed different projects for the company and their safety program, which was a really nice introduction into the industry, right? And gave me a really framework for the importance of safety. I stayed there for a pretty short amount of time, but then I went to work for Kodak in Colorado, where I really focused on that lean manufacturing and Six Sigma background as well, and was able to do a lot of really fun things there, including operations management for various films, right? So you go back in time whenever healthcare films were prevalent and now it's all been digitized, but it was a really cool experience and actually very much rooted in in, uh, chemical processes, right? Because we made it from start to finish. And that was cool because I learned so much about productivity and cost reduction aligned with that company's strategies at the time, right? Then after a little while, I joined WR Grace, as you said. It was back on the East Coast. My husband and I wanted to get back out toward where we came from. And I was there for 15 years. That was a great, great experience. It was there that really found my niche for commercial. I went into global marketing, sales for large corporate accounts, strategy, and then the role that you talked about where you and I met on a, running a growth business there. So that led me to my role here at Advancix. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about Advancix because some people may not be fully aware of them. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that I really like about Advancix is the role we play in the world. We're a fully integrated producer, nylon, chemical intermediates, and plant nutrients. And a lot of times, Victoria, you know, you talk about on your podcast, the chemical industry is so important because we don't always make the products that you see every single day, but they're around you everywhere, interwoven throughout your everyday life, right? So I look at the, the businesses that we're here in advance. Like when we talk about nylon, for example, nylon touches your life as you're sitting down to your dinner table. The chicken that you put on your dinner table was probably, if you're one of those people like me that likes to buy a pre-marinated chicken in an ovenable bag packaged in nylon, um, the carpet on your floor in a hotel or in a commercial space. That's usually made out of nylon. When you think about a lot of different materials that go into your automobiles or your home furnishings or things like that, those are also nylon. And the other products that we make here, we make plant nutrients that go into fertilizers. 
that it help feed the world. Some of our chemical intermediates, you know, taking it back to that example about the food on your table. It's nice to be a part of an industry that touches so many people and helps the world be where we are now and helps our customers be truly successful. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what's interesting is that people, even inside the chemical industry, we all understand the benefits, but we don't necessarily know all the products. Like for instance, I would not have guessed that nylon was in those oven safe packaging. Like that's news. That's news to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Well, you and I've talked in the past about feeding the world and food security and the importance of that and how plastics actually create a good thing for the world, right? We may not understand it fully. And that can be a whole nother podcast about the challenges of packaging because there's a lot of misunderstandings there, right? So when you moved to Advanced Six, the pandemic was in full swing. That also seemed to be a very popular time, as we know, across the general markets, popular time for people to make some moves, but also not an easy time to make a move, right? So the pandemic was in full swing. Supply chain issues were everywhere. How did you get in there? And one, just figure out how to make that move and be successful. And then two, just be able to take that chance and make those change and have that impact in your company. I decided to make a career change in the middle of this global pandemic. Everything was upside down. I remember coming in for my interview here and at the company to meet the CEO and my future colleagues. And I hadn't been in an office. Maybe I'd popped in and out, but there was not an office presence at that time, right? So it felt kind of strange. And I remember as someone who's been around customers and suppliers and meeting new people, it felt a little awkward, right? Because I mean, just hadn't really been out in person with people. So we all kind of been cooped up in our houses for a point, but decided to take the plunge and I relocated for the role as well. I took the role and then about six months into it because the housing market was absolutely nuts too. I decided to relocate. So that was a personal challenge, but it's been a really great experience. I started leading this team where most of us were still kind of working remotely. I mean, people were in and out, but think about meeting people, bonding with your team when a lot of people are still not fully in the office and you don't really have those opportunities to create that rapport. So it took a little bit of different type of leadership and engagement that I think we've all learned how to flex during the pandemic, right? And a little bit more attention on getting to know people and being very purposeful about how we got together, right? Yeah. Yeah. Are people primarily in the office now? What's the work status? Yeah, we are. We are completely back into the office. I mean, there's certainly flexibility. Well, you see, I'm at my home office right now, but we are back in. And most of our companies actually in manufacturing, right? They're in plants. So they never really got that luxury, if you will, of working from home. They were coming to the office. They were coming in. They were being kept very safe. I mean, we took it very, very seriously. We had temperature checks at all the doors going into the plants and masking and all kinds of different things to keep people safe as a lot of people in the chemical industry did because we were, what do we call it? An essential Essential. industry at the time, right? We actually brought everyone back about a year ago and certainly there's flexibility, but for us, it's important to get together and celebrate, collaborate, and make sure that we're working together to move ourselves forward. So let's talk a little bit more about supply chain. So Obviously, the pandemic, the issues with COVID, the current Ukraine-Russia conflict, shutdowns of wide variety in China has had tremendous impacts on global supply chains. And the challenge is really just getting product to customers. How have you navigated that? It's such a great question. Our markets are pretty dynamic and they change relatively quickly. When I came into this role, think about a year and a half ago when it was very difficult to bring materials in. Freights were really expensive. China was shut down in many cases. And at the time, our customers really relied on having a local supplier to meet their needs, right? And so this is where we really thrive. And our focus had to really be on meeting the needs of that customer base and serving as that reliable supplier to our customers. As time has gone on, right, you speak about Europe, the natural gas issues that are happening there. It's very expensive. We've seen some of our peers, you know, different things are happening in the industry. So our focus remains on really playing into this North American position and being a supplier of choice for our customers here because we can get materials to them relatively quick amount of time with high quality, the specifications that they need, even as the markets around us change. We do operate in a global market but there's advantage to being local and understanding how we can play there is really key. And the majority of your asset base is North America, am I right? 
all of our asset bases in North America. Yeah. Yeah. So we That's have pretty uh, many, unique as well in this exactly, marketplace. Exactly. All of our asset bases in North America, primarily in the Virginia area. And we also have manufacturing in right outside of Philadelphia. And then we've made some acquisitions as well, but all of it is domestic U.S. production. We'll be right back. At EcoVist, they're accelerating the transition to a sustainability-driven future. Their long history of innovation, expertise, and customer collaboration supports the development of proprietary catalysts and services across their two industry-leading businesses, Advanced Materials and Catalysts and EcoServices. Advanced Materials and Catalysts is a leader in proprietary and customized technologies for polymers, cleaner fuels, emissions control, and circularity. EcoServices is the largest North American recycler of spent sulfuric acid. EcoVist, your catalyst for positive change. So nylon is a fairly commoditized product. And some would say it's easy to swap suppliers. It's harder to maintain customers when you're in a fairly commoditized market. How do you approach that, right? So when you think about what your differentiation is and maybe what your customer experience differentiation is, what is it? How important is that to Advancix and and what are really your key differentiators? It's such a great question. Like you mentioned, when we talk about the resin space, we tend to think about commodities. We think about cost plus. We don't think about a high level of product differentiation. And when I came here, quickly recognized that you can talk about nylon as a commodity material. Our customers really do value the experience we provide. I mean, I think about the relationships that we have that are built over decades and have withstood the test of time, which is pretty special. One of our key differentiators, I think, Victoria, is that we really enjoy working with our customers on their needs, really understanding their needs as a company and walking hand in hand with them as partners, not just suppliers who are selling them a product. And we're doing more and more as we move into the future, really doubling down on this customer experience and intimacy so that we can truly understand what our customers need and position them for success in the best ways. Yeah. What role does digital play in that? You guys have a strong digital presence. That's a good question. We could have a whole podcast on digital, right? We have. I mean, I have. (laughs) Yeah. We identified the importance of this. We actually have a partnership with Node, which is an online source for information, e-commerce solution for the chemical industry. We have a storefront here. And as we move forward in terms of how we think about serving our customers better, it's an area that we're investing in and want to make sure that we're moving in the future in the right direction here. I think that is the chemical industry has a lot of potential in this area to be able to really meet our customers where they want to be. I mean, the buying behaviors are changing. The demographics of those buyers are changing. The data suggests that our customers are making a lot of their decisions before even talking to one of our salespeople. Are your customers requesting this of you? I mean, is something you've got, I know some big heavy hitters as customers Is this something that they're expecting and saying, hey, you need to switch the way you're doing business? Or is this something that you, Advancix is figuring out that just in terms of this whole evolution of the industry and the demographics of buyers, et cetera? It's more the latter. Our customers are not specifically asking for ordering on their cell phones or anything like that in particular. But I think as we get into really great conversations with them, we're finding that They find value if we can offer them solutions on logging into a portal and understanding what shipped yesterday, what's going to ship today, what's going to ship tomorrow, tracking that through. I mean, I think that there's opportunities there that we're really starting to scratch the surface at that are more than just click the button and we'll refill your order. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do think it's all about the information, right? I mean, I think the benefit of digital, and we certainly see that in our personal lives, but it's true in business is the transparency of information. And it's information that you probably already have in your system. And so figuring out how to surface it for your customers and your suppliers becomes critical and becomes part of that whole value chain, just kind of boosting value in the value chain, if you will. Exactly. I mean, like you said, we already have the, we run SAP, so it's all there. It's just how you get it in a way that's very helpful for yourselves and for your customers to be able to see. And that way you don't have to, call them all. You don't have to have a customer experience person calling them all the time, tracking down trucks, tracking down rail cars, having these discussions, you can actually move into the future. 
Interesting. What about sustainability, right? So I think we've certainly seen in the last couple of years, sustainability has, I think it's reached the tipping point, right? And or the inflection point, if you will, in terms of importance to the industry, importance to the companies themselves, the customers, the investors. What's the focus for Advantix in terms of sustainability? You nailed it. I think the entire industry has a strong focus on sustainability and that you can cast that net into environmental, social, economic sustainability, right? There's all kinds of different pieces and plays in this, right? We just published our annual sustainability report, and I think we're making tremendous progress here. We've gotten a lot of recognition. We got a platinum rating from Ecovadis in 2021 which is impressive. That is impressive. Yeah, it, it places us in the top 1% of all the companies assessed. And so that it's a testament to the work that we're doing and how important we think it is. It's also, it underscores that we have to continue to, to move forward here. We can talk about energy and water and product sustainability. I think that the thing to highlight is really how our focus on sustainability connects to our customers. And if you think about who Advantix is and what we talked about a little bit earlier, we're committed to reducing the environmental impact of our products and using the chemistries that we have here to team up with our customers is a way that's going to help them reach their sustainability goals, right? So it's not just about our view of sustainability, but about our customers. So the different value chains we have have different metrics and different versions of success. And think about we sell into the carpet market, right? They have a very specific view of sustainability. It's very important to them in a different way than would be important to the packaging market, for example, where recyclability and plastic waste is forefront. So we're really diving deep with our customers to understand what those solutions look like for them and creating programs that we can help them with to move their needles forward. Yeah, that's interesting. I think often Well, so much of the chemical industry conversation, the public conversation is dominated around plastics and yet in plastics and circularity and reuse, et cetera. But you're right, the whole, the rest of the value chain and the rest of the storyline needs to get measured differently. And it is around energy and efficiencies and emissions, right? I think at the end of the day, we're all going to be carbon traders in one way, shape or form. And so figuring out how to manage and measure that appropriately and serve the needs of different customer bases and understand how to tune what you do to the different value chains you're part of is critical. Absolutely, because our customers have different priorities in terms of how they're measuring their sustainability goals, right? So what's the priorities of the carpet, guys? I think it's carbon footprint. It is, yeah. I think so. And of course, you think about like, they're not going to make any decisions that are going to create any harm to people. Right. Because I mean, that stuff's going into spaces where people are living. Yeah. Live, roll around on, whatever the case may be. Yeah. Awesome. And the brand owners on the packaging side are very focused on recyclability. Right. Yeah. Interesting. So I know you, Sarah, since you've been in your role, have really been leading and driving transformation or just been part of, I guess, Advanced Six transformation journey. A lot of people working for you both from a business perspective and a manufacturing perspective. When you think about that transformation and the people that are involved in it, what are the critical skills for the future? It is a big transformation. The privilege of leading a very talented team, sales, marketing, manufacturing, customer experience, R&D. And we are at a pivot point, as we talked about in our evolution, right? Moving from this company that has this very rich history in manufacturing to truly understanding our customers in a way that we can help them grow. For me, there's a lot of critical skills to lead this type of change, highlighting a couple customer focus, planning and alignment and the ability to really do that and leadership for the post-COVID era, right? So you think about customer focus in a company that has a lot of history in manufacturing. This means that everyone in this organization has to have a picture of where we're headed and how we serve our customers, right? So we all impact our customers. We're all in some way, shape, or form, customer serving, right? And it's not always that internal customer. There's a big customer at the end here, right? And that's something that there's an opportunity to coach and mentor our teams to make sure they understand that the decisions they're making make a difference for our customers. We talked a little bit about digitization and positioning and all that stuff earlier too. The planning and aligning piece, I mean, I think that this is really around strategy and communications and the ability to 
make decisions quickly to pivot directions, make a decision, fail fast, move on, move at the pace of the industry. And I think also, as we're kind of getting into this era, we've typically in the industry, at least what I've seen, we've thought about leaders as either strategists who transform or operators who execute. And I think now you need both of those tendencies. That ratio could change depending on what you need in business and time to time, but those are important. And it, what also strikes me is if you think about this, as I think about this, is the ability to sort and parse data, right? So I think if anything, we have so much data. So you talk about making decisions quickly. It's also the ability to really funnel down and focus in and discern that critical data, which of course, digitization helps. But I think there's also just a different lens that people need to bring to the table in terms of how they use the data that comes to them to make those decisions, right? Because you could get just kind of paralyzed by the quantities of data, right? Absolutely. And I mean, one of my old coaches always said, make sure you're making decisions on facts and not stories about facts. And it's stuck with me, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other thing I always like to do is you make a decision, but understand what those negative consequences could be and then how you would react, right? Because the reality is you have to make a decision, you have to move forward. But if you understand what your plan B is, if it's successful, great. If it goes wrong, okay, then what are you going to do? Exactly. Then you already have it on a piece of paper and you just go do it. You don't have to. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Awesome. So Sarah, what's next for you as we look ahead to 2023? Can't believe we're almost there. Unbelievable. What do you see as you guys go forward for you in Advanced Continuing to move our transformation forward. We're knee deep in it. I think about where we were and where we're going. We've set ourselves up for success. You think about where we used to be in the nylon business and it was kind of one size fits all for how we were trying to approach things. And now we've divided up our teams and we're much more focused, much more deep in the value chains that we're operating in. Next is just completely executing on that and making sure that we have all of the right pieces of information to really help us make the right decisions and grow with our customers. And I also think that there's an element of, as we are in a new normal, finding ways to myself and my counterparts and my own personal leadership team here, how we can lead the teams in a way that's very rewarding for people, understanding their motivators and drivers, caring about what their value systems are and galvanizing those teams to make forward progress. Because as you know, when you're in a transformation, it's it's a lot of work. It's, it takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of change, right? I mean, if you go back to our chemical principles and the amount of energy to drive change. That's not just true in a chemical reaction. It's true in personal life, in a business transformation, et cetera. So yeah, figuring out how to to manage and navigate that along is critical. Absolutely. Well, Sarah, thank you for joining me today. I appreciate having you on The Chemical Show. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And thank you everyone for joining. Keep following, listening, and sharing. We'll talk to you again soon. We've come to the end of today's podcast. We hope you enjoyed your time with us and want to learn more. Simply visit thechemicalshow.com for additional information and helpful resources. Join us again next time here on The Chemical Show with Victoria Meyer.